Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Mariam, an international medical graduate navigating internal medicine training in the UK. In today's video, I'll be discussing the application scoring for internal medicine training. This information will also apply if you're applying for higher specialty training, although in the latter, MRCP contributes significantly to your score. First of all, congratulations on choosing internal medicine training. As of today, which is October 2024, when I'm recording this video, your self-assessment score doesn't impact your final ranking score directly. It's only used to shortlist candidates for interview. Each round seems to require a higher score to be shortlisted based on the document provided by the IMT recruitment website. It's also important to note that no formal evidence is required for any of these sections in the IMT application, although the recruitment office conducts a randomised audit to ensure the fairer scoring or if there are any specific concerns about the self-assessments. My advice is that do not overscore your achievements and never lie on a specialty training application, as this could lead to referral to the GMC. For higher specialty training, evidence for every claim is essential. Without further ado, let's dive into the application scoring matrix and its changes. I'll only focus on the updates and areas of conflict. Let's start with the postgraduate section. PhD or MD by research is caused the highest here. Important note is that if your primary medical qualification is an MD, it doesn't count in this section. Master's degree remain the same and if you hold a master's in medical education, you can claim it here. You can also claim for other postgraduate degrees as long as they are at least one month long. However, qualifications unrelated to medicine do not count. You must have completed a degree by the application date for it to count. If you have an MD that included a dissertation with significant clinical training, you can also claim it here. You can no longer claim points for memberships from other specialties, for example, MRCGP, nor for the postgraduate certificates or diplomas in medical education in this section. Moving on to the next part, which is the presentation section. One point has been reduced from most options, but you can still achieve the highest score for delivering an oral presentation at a national or international medical conference. For scoring, the UK's home nations are considered separate. For example, a presentation at a Scotland-wide medical meeting is considered national. Most of us have given at least one local oral or poster presentation worth two points in this category. If you haven't done it, it's relatively easy to arrange before the application window closes. Thankfully, the publication section has not changed, so we move on. Then we've got the teaching experience. The top scoring option has dropped by one point, but organising and delivering a teaching programme for at least three months is still required to claim the highest score. The most significant change here is training in teaching. Where the highest scoring master's level option has been removed, and it can now be claimed in the postgraduate section as we talked about. A postgraduate certificate or diploma now holds the highest point value in teaching, provided it's university accredited. So make sure that if you're spending a lot of money on doing a postgraduate certificate, it is from a university. Moving on to the QIP section, there's been no change except a one point reduction from the top scoring option. One key update is that the additional achievement and leadership and management sections have been removed. This could be a plus if you didn't have the relevant experience, but it's no loss if you did. As you can always showcase your hard work, resilience and leadership skills during interview. If you've done something relevant to these categories, but it doesn't meet scoring criteria, include it in your application regardless. Interviewers have access to your application, so you can discuss these experiences, especially if they're relevant. For example, if you attended a 10-day summer school managing patients with chronic disease like diabetes, definitely mention it in your application. I know it's a rather detailed video, but I hope you find it useful when applying for internal medicine or higher specialty training. Remember to check the IMT recruitment website regularly to avoid any last minute surprises as things tend to change. Best of luck for your application and tune in for the next video on navigating work-life balance in IMT.